The devastation of the First World War highlighted the lack of hospital facilities for the care of those wounded in battle. But thanks to the generosity of the Scottish people, the first Erskine Hospital opened in 1916. A hundred years after its inception, and having cared for over 85,000 veterans, Erskine is now Scotland's foremost provider of care for veterans and their spouses. Here are some of the stories. William McDowell, 2nd Battalion Scots Guards, infantry soldier. Uh, I joined the army in 1977, straight from school. Went to the South Atlantic, to the Falklands. Robert McCurdy, Royal Air Force, Aero Engine Fitter. I joined up in the RAF and the job I had to do was to mend them when they broke down. George Collins, again on Southern Highlanders, signalman. Well, this started with the Argyles. We were doing patrol on the borders of Northern and Southern Ireland. William Anderson, Royal Navy, signalman. And I worked on the, br on the bridge of the ship. It was called HMS Dunluce Castle. It was quite a neat experience because that is where it was where it Starwin and Churchill were finalising the end of the war. I, I, I helped Churchill and onto the a launch which took him out onto the ship. It was quite a neat experience, you know, a neat experience really. It was on the, the night of the 13th of June. Everybody started to shout every born in red, which meant the Argentinian jets were incoming. A few minutes later, we heard all the explosions as the Sir Galahad and the Sir Tristram got bombed. But it, uh, it became apparent within minutes that obviously we, that we're, our mates were still on the ship because everybody was shouting that they, some of the sights coming off the boats um, was horrific. We were told by the captain of the ship, you have to go ashore during the night. The Germans came over and sunk the boat that I was on. I had to stay out in the desert, like oh, nothing to do for about three, three or four weeks because the transport was at the bottom of the harbour. I just hear the bang. George was underneath all the bodies. It didn't really sustain an injury. It's because he was underneath all the bodies and all the equipment was on top of him. And he sustained brain damage through lack of oxygen. They said they could remain in the vegetated state for the rest of his days. And I told him, you don't know him. He's a stubborn, stubborn man and nobody will tell him no. So my dad used to be an ambulance driver and my dad told me about this place. I was medically discharged in 1986, fallen injured to both my knees. Uh, by that time I was married and had two children. We spent the next 14 months, homeless. Reported to the DSS office, the, the, the benefits office, because again, I wasn't working. And um, she asked me if I'd ever heard of Erskine Hospital. So she arranged to, to take me out 
Erskine, to meet the, the Colonel, seeing all the old guys sitting there and listening to all the, all the banter going on between them. And I just felt a weight had been taken off me. And then he offered me, he said to me, you know, would you like, we have a three bedroom cottage on the estate and it's yours if you want it. I lost my wife, so I was on, on my own and my two daughters, the girl thought, I thought too it was better to be in here and taken care of. I would say it really is, it really is a, a joy to be here and how they look after us. It was, it was that bad, I couldn't walk, I could hardly talk. And then I was in a wheelchair at first. And then Mr Yule was the physiotherapist at the time. Get George back on his feet. He says, don't you worry, I'll have him back on his feet. He'll be walking, talking. And they don't believe in saying no in Erskine. Everything's possible. I said, I said to him, I'd like to play that game there. He says, well, what's that? He says, that balls. Look at those pieces. They can do it no bother at all. He says, yeah, they've got artificial legs. So he can do it, I can do it. Made him feel like a man, didn't he? Make him feel like an invalid. Eh, yeah, they were good to me. Made sure that I was looked after as well as George getting looked after. You couldn't find any any better, any other place. Erskine's future um, is constantly changing. Erskine's been evolving because it was it was there to be an ever-changing need. Each sort of generation comes in with a whole new set of needs. Uh, and Erskine's evolved and changed with that. Erskine has been kind to me and is full of good people. Erskine gave me my life back. I've stayed in all the Erskine homes and they're very good places. Erskine has not only saved my life, it's given me back my life. Erskine needs to raise nine million pounds each year to support the veterans in their care. That's over 170,000 pounds each week. Can you help? <laughs>